This week on the Wine CEO podcast, I did a quick overview of my top two favorite things in Bone. During my recent trip to Burgundy, I had the great opportunity to visit Hotel Du or Hospices de Bone, which is a hospital, but I promise has a really unique and cool history in the wine industry. And I also talked a bit about the story of Maurice Drouin, second generation winemaker and owner at Joseph Drouin Winery during World War II. And I shared about his story and how his story with the Hospices de Bone intertwined with the Nazi he's attacking his village during World War II. Really interesting story. So if you missed this week's podcast episode, definitely check it out. I'll link it here so you can watch it. But today I'm sharing a unique interview with the grandson of Maurice Drouin, Frederic. Frederic is the current president of Joseph Drouin Winery. And we got to sit down while I was visiting Bone and have a great conversation about his family winery. So let's dive into my conversation with Frederic. Uh, Frederic, thank you so much for joining me to speak Pleasure. with our, our followers Hello. a bit today. Bonjour. So this is uh, Frederic Drouin from the Drouin family. Uh, and Frederic, your uh, family has an incredible history here in Burgundy uh, with, with your winery. So can you tell us a little bit about the many generations, just a bit, a quick history of your family's winery? Uh, a long story short, because it started in 1880 with Joseph Drouin. He was my great grandfather. And he came here in this small house in the center of Beaune to set up his business. And later on, his son Maurice Drouin took over in 1921. Difficult time for both men, because uh, for Joseph Drouin, 1880 was just before the Philoxera crisis. So he was seeing his vineyards getting in bad shape. So the supply was getting short. So, but he found solution. He managed to keep his business alive. He was a negotiant, so he was buying wine, naturally the wine in his cellar below your feet here in the center of Bone. But Maurice Drouin in 1921 had the great idea to set up his own estate. That being said, in 1921, he was not very rich. He had one horse, one motorbike. So the best vineyards were probably in the Côte de Nuit, but he knew about the quality of one single vineyard in Bone, which was Le Clos des Mouches, the vineyard of the honeybees. So he began to buy small parcels, sell by small parcels, to set up an estate of about 40 acres. Mm. Uh, my father, Robert, took over in 1957, and then the estate of Maison Droit expanded to the Côte de Nuit with the Grand Cru, later on in Chablis, and in the 80s in Oregon. Oregon, which was really new for many people, but my father saw, maybe had the vision that in that estate in the US, we could probably produce good wine. Some wineries were already there, but Oregon was much smaller than what it is uh, today. So he decided to produce Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in the Willamette Valley in the Dunn Hills. And my father had uh, four children. And uh, the characteristic of the family business is that we work the four of us together in, uh, in, in the company. Uh, my oldest brother is the vineyard manager, so he's in charge about all the estates. So the Joseph Drouin estate is about 250 acres. It goes from Chablis North to Macon South. That's about 60 different appellations. So when you want to visit our vineyard, I say, how many weeks do you have? Because uh, <laughs> it takes a long time to go from one plot to the other and from South Macon to North uh, Chablis. But we are privileged because it's uh, 60 appellation plus. Uh, 14 Grand Cru, 22 Premier Cru, so those are the prime vineyards of Burgundy. And my sister Veronique is the winemaker of Domaine Drouin, Oregon, and Rose Rock, which are the two properties we now have in the Willamette Valley. And my second brother lives in the US, he lives north of New York, and is in charge of the American uh, market. So keep drinking my wine to, so that the US market remains number one export market for Wonderful. Drouin. But it also tells that it's a long, friendship between the Drouin family and the American citizens. It started with Maurice Drouin first, because he was instructor of the Marc Arthur Rainbow Division back in 1917. Then after World War II, he began to do some business with the US, then my father. So we have a long, long relationship with the American people. Now also now we have a property there. Myself, I happen to be the youngest, and I happen to be the CEO of Maison Drouin. But beyond the title, we all want to bring José Dor in the same direction, to produce very good wines, to respect the origin of the terroir. We grow our vineyards uh, and offer experience to our, our, our customers uh, worldwide. 
That's wonderful. And I learned on my tour that uh, your vineyards that you own are uh, organic and biodynamic, so you have a commitment to sustainability and uh, really appreciating the terroir of the region. So it sounds like it's uh, of importance to your family to continue uh, really taking care of the land here that you have. True enough. Uh, I must say when we started the organic culture that was 35 years ago, no one was saying this is organic culture. For us, it was common sense to go back to the roots, try to have a better respect of the land, because what makes a great wine, it's a mix of the grape variety, the soil, how people work the land. And my father said at some point, maybe the vineyards look too good, but the wines are not as good as they used to be, the one I knew when I was much younger. And also we said that the people working in the vineyards, using the chemicals to fight against uh, mildew, uh, disease, uh, uh, weeds in the soil. This is not good for them, so we wanted to take care both on the land and the people working the land. And this is why we moved to organic uh, culture. But organic, you still use some copper to fight mildew, mm -hmm. for example. And this is why we said we have to go a step further by going biodynamic. So using only uh, infusion of plants, part of, of rocks, that are used at given time of the year to stimulate the defense of the land or to stimulate the, the growth of the roots of uh, the vine. So today, the entire Joseph Doin estate is uh, certified organic and is run biodynamically. That's wonderful. And uh, you, you are a negociant as well, so you do purchase a large number of grapes for the wines that you produce as well. Um, in total, how many bottles do you produce a year? Tough on question. Average? No, it's a tough question because. <laughs> I have to add cases of Bourgogne Blanc, regional appellation, with cases of Moraché Grand Cru. Makes no sense, it's like peas and carrots. Sure. Uh, so I prefer to say I produce about 100 different appellations from Burgundy. Okay. Some are very small, the Grand Cru, I have only two barrels, 600 bottles for the world. This is it, I cannot do more. Uh, I cannot expand the vineyards. And all the wines are more widely available like the Bourgogne Blanc, like saint véran like Chablis, because the vineyards are larger. But as a negociant, I must uh, stress a, a key point. Uh, we buy grapes. We don't buy wine. Mm. The Bordeaux people, the Chateau, they buy wine and they bottle the wine later. Us, we have a long relationship with our supplier, sometimes three generations. We have been loyal to them. And loyalty is among the Druin values in our, in our family. We remain loyal to our, our partners. We know the name of their dog, we know how, what the children are doing, they go to school or whatever. So it's a very close relationship. And we consider ourselves as a kind of ambassador to Burgundy. Uh, we are very proud to represent Burgundy among all the best house of, of, of Beaune. But to control the quality, you need to buy the grape and vinify the, yourself. At this time of the year, we are touring not only our vineyards, but the vineyards of our partners. So how, the, how is the vintage coming? And large crop, small crop, disease, no disease. Today uh, it was a difficult day because yesterday we had uh, some pick from storm in, in Burgundy, but we will, we will survive. We will survive for that. But relationship is key with our suppliers. Mm -hmm. If you had to say one thing in summary to uh, my followers about what you love about Burgundy, what is so unique about this region compared to others, uh, what, what would you say, what would you share? The diversity of terroir. And what do we mean by terroir? The location, the exposure, the ideology, the grape variety, the histories linked to that small plot, not this one. And we only grow one grape variety. The climate is the same, whatever the plot, more or less. Vinification is more or less the same. We don't need much winemaker in Burgundy if you do a good job in the vineyard. But clearly, to Nelson Burgundy, first you have to come. <laughs> have a, a hike, do some biking across the, the vineyard, and then you get a feel about the size of Burgundy, the diversity of location, and then you drink a few bottles. And you understand why this wine is just fruit and nice, this wine delivers experience, emotion, diversity, and soul. Also in Burgundy, sometimes Burgundy can be intimidating. Too many appellations, too many names, how do I choose? Maybe the price is mm -hmm. the first way to enter the Burgundy world. And I say usually pick up one producer, one name. For example, Joseph Drouin. And discover the range of that producer, because by choosing one producer, you have the consistency of style. And then you can understand why 
some bottles are expensive, others are more uh, uh, available, and the fruits experience will be different from one bottle to the other. But don't be shy. I love that. Something that I've learned in being here is truly how you can have a, a plot of vines 100 meters apart and they can taste so different because the terroir, the soil can be so different from one plot to the next. And so I've found that it is so important to try lots of different styles to find uh, the plot that you enjoy, the winemaker that you enjoy. So you truly have to come to Burgundy to experience it, to understand. So thank you so much for your time today. My really pleasure. And again, it. wine is not about winemaking technique. It's about histories. And we have many, many histories to tell to our friends and customers. So enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Frederic. It was so wonderful to sit down with him for a few minutes. It was a very busy week that I was in Burgundy. And the night before we met, there was a huge hailstorm in July. Crazy, I know. And so he was so busy, and yet he made the time to speak with me. So kind. Let me tell you, this family is wonderful. They have an incredible history in the Burgundy region, and I can understand why. They're truly very passionate about the wines that they're making. They're passionate about the community in Burgundy, and they're so passionate about consumers around the world understanding the beauty of their region. I hope you have a chance to check out wines from the Joseph Duran family. I'll link their website here so you can check them out and maybe talk to your local wine shop or distributor about getting some of these wines in if you haven't been able to try them before. I hope you drink something new and delicious and I will catch you all in the next episode of the Wine CEO Podcast. <laughs>